Hey guys, welcome to this quick tutorial on painting 135th scale faces. So in this tutorial I'm going to try to break it down step by step how I paint faces, my train of thought, what's going on and why I'm using these products in w in the sequence I am. I have a, a nice little head here from Alpine where we're going to be painting up. And uh, in this tutorial I'm going to be using uh, paints from the AK uh, skin and fleshed uh, um, set. So the four colors I'm going to be using. Um, so I'll start off the base color. So the base color uh, into focus. So this is going to be the foundation to our actual uh, the flesh tone. It's going to give us our shadows. Um, a good base uh, tone is always good and always starting from the dark to the light. So this is going to kind of help give our character um, some complexion. Then we're going to have an intermediate skin tone. This is the first highlight color in the set, or light flesh. And we're going to start focusing on the um, the tops of his brows, his nose, his lips, and things like that with this. And finally, for our final highlight, where the light's catching the figure the most, we're going to be using um, highlight flesh. And that's going to be really focused and um, disciplined in how we apply it. So we're going to be really kind of applying to like just like the tops of his cheeks, um, the leading edge of his jaw, his ears, and things like that. And finally, we're going to be applying uh, a cheekbone glaze, as the name might suggest. It's a glaze that goes on the cheeks. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with glazes, they're in the the wash and filter family, basically. It is a, a thinned down transparent paint that can be applied like a wash but very, very localized. We don't apply it to the entire face and we will literally um, focus it in to the depressions of the cheekbones. Now, not to worry, I, you will see all this live and I will talk you through it. So that's going to be the four colors and this is will be the sequence in which we use going from dark to light even though this colour is dark, but this is going to give them a complexion, and that's the important thing about cheek glaze. So we'll start by um, giving our model its foundation. So I'm going to take AK Base Flesh, and I'm going to apply this with my airbrush. So there we have our base coat um, applied to our figure. So this, as you can see, is a very warm hue. So this is going to help give um, our character or our figure here uh, a very lively complexion. It'll help make them not look like a corpse. You can apply as many light coats as you wish. I'd always recommend at least two quite light watered down coats in that case you do not lose any detail. And you can either apply it by brush or by airbrush, depending what type of system you're using. Do, however, give your coats plenty of time to dry in between, unless you're going to do wet blending, but this will not be covered in this video, as I tend not to use it that much. So I'm going to allow this to dry for at least 30-40 minutes, as it's an acrylic, it shall dry quite quick. Once this is dry, we start doing our highlighting sequence. This is nothing really to worry about, it's actually a very intuitive um, sequence, morally just following the lighter colour to the highest point of the face. It's, it's quite simple and once you see it in operation it should be quite simple to grasp. So we'll begin with that in a moment. Okay so we're going to begin uh, putting in our highlights. So I'm going to take our first highlight colour which is 
So I've after put a small amount onto my wet palette and I've tinted it with a little bit of water and I'm using a long good point of brush. This is a number three from the Windsor Newton Cotman range. So I'm just going to put a small amount onto my brush. When you're not really sure where to begin with this, it's easy just to start with the brow, the nose and the jawline and work your way from there. Just take your time to build up the paint, there's no hurry. You can always be working on a different segment of the figure while you're waiting for and you're waiting for another segment to dry. It's the handiest way to do it. And is what I would recommend. By keeping our paint nice and thin, we achieve a level of translucentness, transparency. And this is good because this will kind of help everything blend in together as we begin to add more and more lighter layers. And what I'm doing is I'm simply working the lighter color to the areas of the, the sculpt that isn't in recess and leaving the original darker color in areas where the, there is a recess. It's quite simple. It's quite in, intuitive. It's not a difficult process. So like the inner ear, I will leave in the original color. Now I have gone in a little bit heavy in places but once again nothing to worry about. I can always come in here later with subsequent layers to tidy it up and also we can always use washes as well to tidy up if you have a mistake but more on that later. Just keep it to simply using this set. Again I just used a little bit of the same colour to the bottom of the jaw leaving the area just below the lip um, in the original shadow colour. Again the brow and as you can kind of see I'm doing very small and gentle brush strokes. I'm not really working the paint too aggressively into the model as I want this to be a gentle transition and also if you work it too hard into the model you will find that the bristles of the brush begin to well plaster the, the model with paint and give it texture. We, we want to avoid adding textures if at all possible. Also keeping your pin, your pin, your paint thin. Again is something to keep in mind at all times. So, as you can see, he's beginning to take shape now. We're beginning, we're beginning to give him a complexion. So, on will it be on your right or the left side of this um, figure? You can see the basic first layer highlighting, and on the well, my right, the model without highlighting. So, you can see the light difference. And what we're doing is we're just working our way slowly up to the the to the light using less of the lighter color as we go in between each layer and again we just keep our paints nice and thin and we let the model really paint itself And I'm just going to apply some of this lighter colour to the lips. I tend not to give my figures um, too much kind of rosiness in the lips. It makes it look like they're wearing lipstick. And for me personally, I always tend to avoid this. So I just tend to give them a very gentle highlight and then don't really make it, don't add any real red hue to it. Um, it tends just to make them look a bit toyish, in my opinion. One of the reasons why I don't really tend to um, apply eyebrows either, just because I find it's a very difficult 
um, exercise to achieve correctly and realistically and when it's not done correctly it looks very toyish once more so I tend to avoid doing that but again that is just my technique everyone has a slightly different aesthetic to what they enjoy when it comes to painting models and that's just mine however there are plenty of other ways of doing it but this is just a nice simple way and it can do a lot with it, it's very flexible now as you can see I'm applying the lighter colour to the tops of these inner ears I don't know how well the camera is picking that up kind of keeping this in focus is proving a little bit tricky but at least you guys have a better a better chance of seeing so you can kind of see already the difference but the original colour of the base shade is shining through so under his jaw under, or under, under his upper lip in the recesses of his eyes now I will be painting in the eyes in a few moments but um, a brush like this is too wide so we'll be switching treat your brushes as well they're your tools different tools do different jobs thus different size brushes do different jobs a number three or number four brush is great for doing blocking work this is a term we use when we're painting in the main colors or the main components of color into a model whether it be a figure or a tank it doesn't matter and then when we switch to the more finer detail work a finer brush like a number two or number one with a fine point is um, strongly recommended. I'm just mixing a small amount of water into my my paint as it's beginning to dry somewhat and I can see by the consistency you will actually you will notice a diff a change in consistency. Um, the paint will always behave somewhat tacky. Um, it'll go down almost like a plaster or almost like a, a porridge like consistency onto the model. This is an indication that your paint is beginning to dry out so add a tiny amount of water just literally a tip of a brush amount of water into your into your wet palette mix it into your your paint and you're good to go and I'm just keep working up the base color or should I say the first highlight color until I'm happy and once again the only real person that has to pass muster is with you so if you feel that the color is accurate accurate or to an acceptable level then by all means but we want an even and consistency. This is what gives good figures is consistency. There's no point having a blotchy face because it just looks like you kind of you tried it and then you went, oh, I don't like this anymore. If you commit to it, try to see it through, but try not to overwork it. Meaning, don't go for layer upon layer upon layer, but just try to go for a nice, smooth, even paint coat. And once again, you will see it as well. This is visual art as well as it is a technical one. You can also note that I'm pulling the brush only in one direction with each stroke. So I'm, I'll pick a, a direction of paint and I'll just only paint in that direction. And I'm sure that the, those of you who have been paying attention will have noticed that quite early on. And this is done not to create any texture in the paint. Like I said, texture is not good when it comes to painting flesh. Again, just keep working up, and I'm building it up in the areas where I feel the light would hit the model the most. Again, I can't tell you where exactly that may be. Every figure is different, but again, look at your um, look at your light source and how it's behaving with your model. It's always good to have a single light source at times to, while painting figures and have it directly over your head because it, it actually will cast natural shadows and then just replicate where the light falls. The hardest with your lighter colors is quite it's quite straightforward. Again, kind of build that up a little bit too much, but again, I can just clean off my brush and then work it in and kind of, in effect, kind of wet blend it in or feather it in, should I say, be more the correct term. So you can kind of see, oh, well, maybe you can't. The transition is getting there slowly but surely. And I'm going to focus on this side of the head as I have built up enough color on the other side. This is a good idea to keep alternating between both sides of the face as we do not want to overwork um, the model. 
And what I mean by overwork, it means we're just going to put too many layers and we're basically undoing your hard work. And once again, I can tell by the consistency of my paint that I need a little bit more water. So I'm just going to mix that in. Let's have like an old brush I use for mixing my paint, so I try not to use the paint brush I am I am mixing with. But however, if you are, I'll show you a small simple technique for getting the point back on your brush instead of using your lips and your mouth. Now a good idea. So you just pull and twist into the paper or whatever you're using on your palette and that reforms the tip of your brush. So very simple but handy little technique nonetheless. So he's nearly there, he's almost ready for his next set of highlights, but I'm just kind of taking out some of the blotchiness. Now I'm not going to touch his cheek for a couple of seconds because there's, there's too much paint and if I touch that what will happen is I'll start pulling semi dry paint and I'll create um, ridge lines in the model. So again I'm going to leave that alone for a couple of seconds. I'm simply just going to do a 360 turnaround of the model and simply pick out some areas I think that need attention. And there we have our first layer of highlights. So the next step is going to be adding final highlights. And that's going to be done with our highlight flesh. So we have light flesh, which is the shade we just applied. And as you can see, I've painted over most of the base flesh shade. I've only allowed it to be in the areas such as the area around his chin, his, uh, his, where his eye sockets are, his inner ears, and uh, behind his ears. Basically anywhere where the light would be obstructed. It also gives us nice contrast. The last element, and this is where we must be the most disciplined, is the final highlight. Now this is, I only tend to use a tree colour, no, a trifecta if you will, or um, a triage. Some people tend to go um, much more to town, but that's down to personal preference. I always find tree shades works just fine, especially for 35th scale figures, because um, you don't have to spend, unless you're really looking for the challenge yourself, but that's not the purpose of this tutorial. So with this colour, we must be our, at our most disciplined. And we're going to focus on areas where only the most intense light is falling on the figure. And for that, we're going to focus on the centre of his chin, the button of his nose and his nostrils, and the leading elements of his brow and cheeks and, all, and the top of his ears only. This breaks up and adds even more contrast to the model by being more disciplined and adds just that element of realism that we're looking for. So now I'm going to take our highlight flesh and I, we are going to be very disciplined in the application of this colour. As you can see if I show you on the dry palette the, uh, the highlight flesh it naturally is the lighter shade there so it's a quite a large jump and we don't want to go too mad with that or we'll lose all contrast in the flesh and the skin will look very flat and uninteresting. So I'm going to only really apply it in areas I feel where the light is going to be as most intense. So I like I always say if you're unsure, always start with the T of the face, which I mean by that is the brow and the nose and kind of work your way back from there. So it's what I was finding the easiest way is when you're trying to figure out where to start. And it's no different now, so I'm going to do that here. So I'm just going to remove the excess of the paint off this brush so I can control it. And how I did that was I just really tapped it off my my uh, my thumb, and uh, a lot of the paint transferred over. This is acrylic, so I won't poison myself by doing so. And just tap that in to his nostrils. I'm going to tap it into the bridge of his nose, and then just kind of work it back. I'm going to thin out my paint just a little bit because it's slightly intense. By keeping our paints tin, 
And literally when I mean thin out my paint, I just mean dipping the very leading edge of a brush into a small amount of water and then just mixing a small amount. Um, as you can see by the consistency of the highlight flesh, you haven't, it's, not, it's not that runny. It just allows it to flow mildly better. We don't want too much water in it. If it's too runny, uh, you put too much in. And you'll have a hell of a time trying to control the paint of your model. And this is not good, not good at all. I'm just going to focus just a small amount of this colour and then feather it to his chin, to the leading edge of his brows, and let's feather it back. And I, the, this, the exercise here is to show that just with a little bit of work and a bit of patience you can get a reasonably nice looking figure um, just with, uh, by taking your time. However, you can go way more to town with this if you so wished, if you wanted to invest a couple of hours on a figure, which you could easily do. But I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. And I kind of want this to be kind of a general purpose figure painting or flesh painting. So now I'm going to focus really just on the tips of the ears. So once again, that's where the light's going to be is most intense, and it's going to run it down that way. And now I know this looks furry, stark, and jarring, but there's a way around to make this all sit and blend and work together. But then again, you do want to draw attention to it. Now one of the last details you have to do before we start adding our cheekbone glazes is our our eye detail. Now this is something that I would say to any new figure painter that if you're somewhat new to it and you're not sure how best to go about it, there's no harm or more so it's best practice to practice on a figure you don't mind kind of sacrificing to the painting gods. For some of the fact being is eyes, a uh, badly painted eye can really undo a model. So if you've uh, you've done a great job painting the face up until now or the uniform um, and you haven't painted uh, eyeballs yet, maybe try it on um, a figure you don't mind messing up because it does take a little bit of practice. But then again, it is not by any way some type of Zen, <laughs> seek, kind of Zen master secret type thing that you needed 20 years up on a mountain top to find. No, it's just all down to brush control, keeping your paint thin, and simply being patient. And after all, we're model makers. Patience should be our thing. Focus. So it still looks almost clown like, which is something that you must not be too dissuaded by. It just um, it's not until we start mixing everything or our, put our cheekbone glazes in and our final touches that it all come together. Now to do these lips, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two colours on my wet palette, which is um, light flesh and highlight flesh, and I'm just going to make a, a light um, mix of them. Not um, really any ratio here, just uh, kind of a light but somehow warm you. And this is what I'm going to use for painting in these lips. So there's the colour there, the little mix. So it's kind of like a warm but light you. I don't want to go to like, um, too bright a colour because they look ridiculous. I'm just going to paint in his lips. Oh, it's a little bit intense, but what I'm going to do is going to wipe the paint off my brush, dampen my brush, and when the paint is still wet, I'm just going to work it in.
And there we have it. If you find you've gone too light, which I kind of feel I have here on this side of the face, I'm just going to go back to my light flesh and then just tap that in to kind of, I feel because I just went in a little bit too much with the light flesh or highlight flesh. I don't really like the use. So I'm just going to apply a small amount back in here just to darken that slightly. And there we have it. So once again, you can add to paints if you find it's too stark you can always just use the colors you have and then slightly darken it try not to go too extreme one or the other and just kind of slowly work your way up to it that that way gives you a lot of control and much easier on undo anything you may not like now we'll do i'll talk about briefly on how i like to paint the eyes um, and everyone's gonna have a slightly different way of doing it due to their brush control my brush control isn't the greatest so I have to work around that so well, what I like to do is I'd like to take um, a zero brush and then just do what I like to do uh, if anyone's watched my tutorials in the past a slash and a dash a slash for the whites and a sli small dash for the pupils however I do not use flat white try to avoid using flat white if at all possible because it's too jarring and garish we do not want this uh, or at least in my opinion it is not um, really desirable however if you like it then go for it but uh, this is uh, to me it's too it's too stark and it's very unrealistic so I'm gonna take if I can find it I'm gonna take um, an off-white color this is game color off-white however you can use any other kind of kind of like sky gray color you have and it's gonna mix a bit of off-white and then I'm gonna mix a little bit of um, light flesh into it. I know these are two different brands but they're both acrylics and you can get away with mixing them. And I'm just going to mix them here using the back of my brush and I get this kind of weird egg-like color as you can quite see there. Now it's a little bit more orange on camera than it actually is but it's almost like a very pale salmon color. And the reason why I use this is because I find white just too stark and too, um, kind of, it, it kind of draws too much attention away from the rest of the thing. I know like the eyes are meant to be the gateway to the soul, but if they're overdone in scale, it kind of um, undoes your work a little bit. So I'm going to take a number of zero brush again. I tend to like these long bristle brushes just because I have more control with them. And I'm just going to put a small amount onto my brush. Now again, if you're not comfortable doing doing eyes, practice on um, an old figure that you don't mind um, sacrificing. Now because I have a shake in my hand, I tend to lock my um, my wrist to the desk. Now hopefully um, I can do this on frame or in frame should I say. Slash and dash. Not the greatest eyes I've ever done, but not bad with a camera under my nose. So there we have it. So there are his eyes painted in. Now, a model maker with better hand control than I would even get that finer, but for me, that is good enough. Then what is left to be done is the pupils. Now, there's different ways of doing the pupils. Some people use black, some people use blue. Um, I tend to go for like a dark blue or a grey, like I'm a a German grey colour. I never like using flat black. However, one of the lads, um, who's another quite accomplished and very talented figure painter and a good friend, um, that's Ian from that 135th scale show, he used blue. So I'm going to actually try doing a little bit of blue, just to see what it's like. You know, There's no harm in ever experimenting on these things, because that's how we best learn. And that's all this is, is more like encouragement to experiment. So I'm going to take a little bit of just regular deep blue from the Army Painter range again. You could use any other deep blue, kind of navy blue shade you have. Again, I want almost all the paint removed from my brush. And I'm just going to do a dash. And then, so there's the first eye pupil in. Again, I hope that's in focus. And of course it's not, but... And then, I'm going to do the next one. 
It's important that you take the time to make sure you don't give them cross eyes. Try to make sure both eyes are looking in the same direction. There we have it. Oh geez, actually. I don't understand why the blue works, but it kind of gives a little bit more depth. So there we have our basic skin painted in. And excluding the drying time after laying down the layers, it only took about 40 minutes of painting. So it doesn't take that long to get reasonably nice figures. And that was kind of the objective of this little tutorial was to kind of give someone an introduction into bumping cameras. You know, in, in a quick introduction into painting figures. And it's not that difficult to paint faces. Um, again, it is an art form in, in the sense that it does take a lot of practice to paint figures um, to like master class levels, which this surely is not. It's not even in the same league as that, but it doesn't look bad sitting in a tank hatch, and it's a it's a good step in the right direction towards that if you so wish to take that journey. Now the last part I'm going to do is the cheekbone glaze. Now the colour is a little bit thick, so I'll, I'm I'm not going to apply it that thick. So I'm going to put a little bit of water through it just to thin it down. It's a small amount of water through, not much, but just. Uh, I don't want to be in too uh, intense. And then I'm going to use go back to my larger brush, my number three, and I'm just going to tap this in to his cheeks. And this is going to give him his complexion. That's a little too thick, but I'm just going to dampen my brush and and I just ruined it. Ha, but we can wipe away if we don't like. That's another thing I like about acrylics. If you don't like it before it dries, just wipe it away. And there we have it. You kind of cheated there using my finger, but by even just applying it almost like a, a wash and wiping the excess away, kind of got an effect I wanted. I'm also going to apply that to his lips just because I want a little more definition in them. And there we have it. Now there's still a little bit more work to be done there especially just around the side of his jaw. So again because of the wet palette and the long drying time we get out of them I'm just going to take my light flesh which was the first highlight color we went back to and I'm just going to do a little bit of work here just to link that in because it looked a bit silly without it there we have it So this is a quick beginner's guide to painting 135th scale faces and as you can see it is not a difficult task just take your time kind of follow a logical darker to lighter step in your colors and just be patient and you can get some pretty nice effects like this is 40 minutes of work and so I really hope this proved um, to be somewhat of use to you uh, stay tuned for further painting tutorials and hopefully I'll have better camera angles where it's actually in focus because that would be nice. Um, but hopefully this uh, has, will give you a good idea. So if you have any uh, comments, please just leave them in the comments of this video or any, uh, any uh, questions, please just feel free to ask and I'll be happy to help you out. So thanks for watching, stay safe and watch out for those buses. Bye bye.